Hello, folks. Uh, this is Kent Hovind. It is the uh, May 23rd, 2015, and I wanted to share uh, what's going on with my situation. I'm still wearing an orange jumpsuit, obviously, still in the Santa Rosa County Jail, and I should have gone home Monday. Here's the situation. Let me explain how it works for everybody so you know who to call and what to do. Congress pa In 2007, Congress passed a law called the Second Chance Act which says if a person's in prison for the first time and it's nonviolent, they can be given six months home confinement off the end of their sentence. Normally you serve 85% of your sentence, so in a 10-year sentence you would serve eight and a half years, but you can knock off six months for home confinement. You can also knock off 10% of your sentence, so in my case one full year, for halfway house. That's what the Second Chance Act says. However, they give the discretion of whether you're going to get that time to the Bureau of Prisons. And of course, since they get paid based on body count in prison, they don't want to give that out at all or certainly give out the minimum. So <clears throat> I began back in 2013 putting in the proper paperwork up in Berlin, New Hampshire to say I would like to be released to the full year, home con full year halfway house, which is three blocks from my house, and I would like the full six months home confinement. So I'm going to just quickly show the pictures, to sh uh, show the paperwork to show that I do indeed have these. I will mail these to Ernie or somebody who can then post them and send them to the appropriate people to show, yes, indeed, he did follow all the right rules. He followed the paper trail. The problem is on the BOP's end, not on my end. I did everything right. I started with what's called a BP-8. <coughs> that is simply what the inmates refer to as a cop-out. I don't know where that name comes from, but it's considered a BP-8 form where you make a request to a staff member, would you please do this for me? They then respond at the bottom with uh, their response down here below this line. So I'm just going to read this to you. After a BP-8, if you don't get satisfaction, you go to what's called a BP-9. <coughs> and a BP-9, or looks like this. This is a BP-9 form that I have. So I did all of these and got the responses from the appropriate uh, uh, people. So I'll just read this to you. This is my BP-8 form. After that, your BP-10 goes to the regional director, which in the case of the New Hampshire prison was, I think, Philadelphia. And then if you don't get satisfaction there, you go BP-11, which goes to the headquarters of the BOP in Washington and you keep going up the food chain trying to get a response. I have all of that paperwork in my file. I'll be sending that to Ernie. <coughs> Here is what's called the BP-8. To Miss Sedlak, Randalee Sedlak was the case manager at Berlin, New Hampshire. She was later promoted down the hill to the medium security, and a new guy took over, uh, which I will get into in a minute. <coughs> so on uh, August 13th, 8-13, now let me see, is this classic or what? Wow, on 8-13 is when I arrived at the Santa Rosa County Jail, one year later. 8-13 of the year 2013, a year before I came here, uh, I wrote to Ms. Sedlak and said, uh, from Kent Hoven, register number 06452-017. Under the Second Chance Act of 2007, I hereby request that I be submitted for the full 12 months halfway house and or home confinement. She responded, you will be reviewed in accordance with the Second Chance Act on October 17th through the 19th uh, for, hard to read the writing here, for your release. Okay. Then. I wrote back October, I mean November 15th, after I had had what they call a team meeting, T-E-A-M, where everybody, the counselor and the team manager meet and they decide, you know, how are you doing? Every six months, every inmate in the federal prison meets with their, what they call a unit team, which was uh, counselor Wesley Shea and uh, Ms. Randall Lee Sedlak. So on uh, November, or, yeah, November 15th, no, I'm sorry, October 15th, I wrote to her and said, uh, it says, state your complaint. Today, I'm reading off this form now. Today at team, I was told I was being approved for six months home confinement. Per the Second Chance Act, I asked if I could also be given six months halfway house time for a total of 12 months combined. I was told that that is not possible, and I dispute that determination. 
Uh, and it says, state what actions you have made to formally resolve your complaint. It says, I spoke to my case manager in an effort to resolve the issue. State what resolution you expect. And I said, I would like the additional six months halfway house placement. Okay. Then I got a response from Ms. Sedlak. On October 15, 2013, you were reviewed in accordance with the Second Chance Act of 2007. The unit team considered your needs for services, public safety, and the necessity of the Bureau of Prison of the Bureau to manage its inmate population. There's the key word right there. They want to manage their population. In other words, we need your warm body here. We can't let you go because we don't have enough people because it cuts into our budget. <clears throat> you were determined to be appropriate for home detention placement based on your limited transitional needs. So there they're admitting I was determined to be approved. This placement recommendation is of sufficient duration to provide the greatest likelihood of successful reintegration into the community. Then I went up to the next uh, chain. This went to the warden. I put in a request and said, look, I, I want the six months halfway house in addition to the six months home confinement. The warden, Deborah G. Schultz, S-C-H-U-L-T-Z, Ph.D., warden, responded on 1030 of 2013. So this is uh, 15 days after I put it in. This is in response to your request for administrative remedy dated October 2nd, in which you request consideration for six months re residential reentry center, RRC, placement in addition to six months home detention. Records reflect that you were reviewed in accordance with the Second Chance Act of 2007 on October 15th and recommended for six months of home detention placement to begin on your home detention eligibility date of February 11th, 2015. February 11th, 2015, I was approved to go home it's three months ago now. The unit team noted your strong family ties, lack of substantial transitional needs, and overall low risk assessment as the rationale for the recommendation. The unit team believes this placement is of sufficient duration and will provide the greatest likelihood of successful reintegration. Accordingly, your request for administrative remedy is denied. So they're denying me the six months halfway house, but they're admitting they approved me for the six months home confinement. Hmm. If you're not satisfied with your decision, you may appeal to the regional director at the Bureau of Prisons in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and it's got the address here. So I did, <coughs> and I got a response from the regional director <coughs> right here. Appeal number is on the top of the page. A response from the regional director uh, right there. Okay. <coughs> You're, you appeal the decision of the warden at FCI Berlin and request additional re-RRC placement in conjunction with the home confinement placement. Placement in community programs are designed to provide transition for inmates reintegrating into society near the end of their sentence. And it talks about the program statement, etc. Let me skip down to paragraph two. A review of your appeal reveals you have an August 11, 2015 projected release date. Your unit team considered your individual situation, programming, and transitional needs pursuant to the above criteria and recommended 182 days of home confinement placement. So here's the regional director saying you were recommended for 182 days of uh, home confinement. So the regional director, J.L. Norwood, says you were recommended. So they knew this was paperwork was in the pipeline. This placement was determined to be sufficient to provide you the greatest likelihood of successful reintegration into the community. Staff are afforded broad discretion in reaching this decision. And by the way, that's the problem. The Second Chance Act should be mandatory. But, uh, and you, you present no evidence this discretion was abused. Accordingly, your appeal is denied. If you don't like it, appeal to the people in Washington, D.C. So I appeal to D.C. Actually, I filed a lawsuit saying I, I require that they follow this. This is the, the header page of the lawsuit. I don't know if you can, I'll just read the numbers onto you. I filed a lawsuit and said, I want everything the law offers me. 
And this is in New Hampshire, at the Federal Court of New Hampshire. It was case number 1, colon, 11-CV, like Carl Vincent, dash 00062, dash JL. And Ernie, anybody can look that up on PACER and get all the documents filed in the lawsuit. I filed a lawsuit saying, I want... Um, to be, I want to be given everything that I deserve under the law. Here is uh, a picture of the first page, Petition for Writ of Habeas Corpus. This is my petition saying, look, I, I want what the law says I'm supposed to have. In New Hampshire, it only costs $5 to file a lawsuit. So I did, paid the $5, and the suit was eventually dismissed. They said, no, six months home confinement is enough. Uh, then, oh, I have a, more documents. I have a lot of stuff. I will copy all of this and send it to Ernie to get posted online. But that's, a, that's the general picture after the lawsuit to get them to force them to give me the additional uh, halfway house. I thought, oh, well, at least I get to go home in February. That has been approved. And I thought it had been approved all the way along until I find out now, all of a sudden, that I should have gone home a week ago. No, somebody did not sign a paper someplace. It appears like the thing ball got dropped in the Berlin, New Hampshire at the case manager. Randall Lee Sedlak, the case manager, shortly after she approved me, was promoted. <coughs> a new man took over named Patrick Devinney, who is still the case manager to my knowledge. And apparently he is the one who didn't finish the job and send the paperwork on. So because uh, of his error, I'm assuming it was him, uh, even though everybody up the line knew I'd been approved, it wasn't some paper signed. So the regional director knew, Washington knew, that I'd been recommended for Halfway House, but somebody never finished pushing the paperwork through. So <clears throat> they are personally damaging me since I should have been home five days ago, now that my new case has been completely dropped, there's absolutely no reason for me to be here or be transferred to Yazoo or any place. I should go home. So if you want to know who to contact, those are some things you can do. I'll get all this paperwork sent to Ernie. It can be posted. You can prove the point. What we have here is a situation like the Three Stooges where they're all pointing at each other. You know, not me, not me. It's him. You know, or button, button. Who's got the button? The, the, this can be solved so simply. The director of the entire BOP can simply stand up and make an executive decision. He can simply call everybody down the chain and say, let this man go home today. He can do that. The judge can do that, but will not. I'm almost certain, but could. But that would involve modifying the sentence. They all have 50 reasons of why they can't do what obviously should be done in this case. So <clears throat> certainly I want you to pray. Whether it helps me or not is, is one issue. I'd like to go home, obviously. But I think the bigger picture is I think this is a classic case to expose the sheer stupidity of the system in general and the bureaucracy. And the, See, I have people on the outside like you that are helping me, making calls and praying and supporting. There are thousands of inmates that the same thing has happened to them, but nobody's out there helping them. So we're doing this for everybody. This is the season right now <clears throat> when the congressmen pay attention. For the next few months before election, every congressman is going to get elected again. All of them are listening, or at least pretending to be listening, to their constituents. This is the time for you to ask them some simple questions. Congressman, you want to run for Congress. You would like me to vote for you. I'd like to ask you some questions. Do you profit from the prison system in any way? Do you own land that you lease out to build prisons on? Most prisons are built on land that is leased for 100 years from somebody. And usually it's a corporation. Okay, are you on the board of that corporation? Are you the director of the timber company that owns the land that the federal courthouse in Pensacola is on? Do you own stock in the prison system in any way? Because I don't want you voted into office where you can make laws, because we're going to pay you for that, and then you make more profit on the backside by owning stock in the prison system. That would include the transportation of inmates, the G4S company that hauls people around. Do you own stock or profit from transporting prisoners? Maybe that's why they've moved Kent Hoven 23 times in prison, because somebody gets paid every time I get moved. <coughs> Do, do you own stock in the company that makes these crazy jumpsuits or makes the prison clothing or does the commissary or runs the telephone system or home wave this 50 cents a minute thing I'm using right now? It's $30 an hour for a computer, <laughs> which costs them three cents. Okay. 
who, who's profiting off of this? I'm not saying people shouldn't make a profit, but it shouldn't be any judge or congressman or senator or anybody involved in law enforcement. You should ask your congressman, hey, you're running for Congress. Would you pass a bill? Would you present a bill that says anyone who is involved in law lawmaking or law enforcement who is also caught profiting from the prison system will be given 10,000 years in jail? Whoa. You know, let's, let's explain it to them in a language they understand. Thank you so much, folks. Please, thank you. Keep praying for this. This case is much bigger than just Kent Hovind, though I have a personal dog in the fight. <laughs> it is, this is going to help many if we press this issue all the way. Thank you so much.